I'm here today with UC Berkeley management professor David Teese who's written a chapter for the new Oxford Handbook on Human Capital. The chapter is called Human Capital, Capabilities, and the Firm. Um, David, as a starting point, what type of reader is likely to, to find this chapter most useful? Uh, basically, anyone that's interested in understanding, in particular, Silicon Valley type firms mm -hmm. that depend critically on creative talent, be it technological, uh, be it creative in some other way. So uh, the likely audience is people that, that want to understand how companies, the new companies uh, of, this, uh, of this century, compete in, in the very competitive environment that they face. So the subtitle of your chapter is Literati, Numerati, and Entrepreneurs in the 21st Century Enterprise. And I, I know what entrepreneurs are, but uh, what are literati and numerati? Well, you got to read the chapter for that, <laughs> Greg. But in essence, the literati and the numerati are extremely talented and well-educated individuals. The literati may have uh, a background in the liberal arts. Uh, the numerati are those, the programmers, the, the scientists, uh, and quite frankly, Creativity today, uh, particularly in technology-driven industries, uh, requires not just entrepreneurship, but it requires that you build and manage uh, a large number of highly talented individuals. And you know what? You don't manage highly talented, creative people the same way that you manage people on the production line. Or if you try, you're unlikely to be very successful. Well, can you be more specific about what sort of management techniques work with these experts? Yeah. Um, if you think about invention and innovation, what works is to give people a common view about what the goal is, uh, to encourage, uh, but not to provide traditional management oversight. Uh, in other words, uh, providing a high degree of autonomy, uh, a high degree of freedom, to work in the manner and at the hours that are necessary or that, that, are, that are desirable by the individual, uh, essentially giving them the autonomy to be themselves, to be creative, but the tools to collaborate and the tools to build together. Hmm. So are these experts really the, the heart of the company? Is the company's fate tied to a, a handful of people? Well, of course, every good human resource person will say everyone's important, which of course is true. But there's no doubt, if you look at the data, that really what distinguishes uh, some truly creative companies is, you know, the top 10% of the talent. The top 10% of the talent are the ones that seem to pioneer the new ideas, that come up with the creative ideas. But of course, it takes a team to actually make it happen. But just having a team of ordinary people <laughs> won't necessarily get you anything great. And this is a challenge that companies have that want to be great. They have to have some stars. Universities understand this. Sports teams understand this. Uh, companies that are competing in the marketplace and that rely on creativity may not understand it quite as well. But hopefully they'll understand it better if they read my chapter. <laughs> well, backing up to the subtitle, Literati, Numerati, and Entrepreneurs, so um, entrepreneurs, I think, of startups, is this mainly applicable to startup companies? No, I mean, it certainly is. But part of my theme is that, you know, traditional companies, established companies, they must also be managed in the same entrepreneurial way. Uh, management is really about entrepreneurship today. Hmm. And managers that just manage won't succeed. They have to lead and they also have to be entrepreneurial. What is the role of an entrepreneurial manager? Well, it, it almost goes back to Joseph Schumpeter. He talked about innovation being new combinations. So an entrepreneurial manager is always putting together things in different ways. You know, complementary assets, complementary technologies, co-specialized technologies, essentially figuring out what the opportunities are out there, what the restraints are, and constantly reshaping not just the, the products, that are going to the market, but the, very, the organization itself. So it's not about managing in an operational sense, although that matters. It's about 
new combinations mm -hmm. and the orchestration, what I, I use the term the orchestration, the orchestration of complementary and co-specialized assets is today the essence of what the managerial challenge is in, in fast-paced industries. Well, the title of the chapter is about capabilities. Is that about the capabilities of the employees? It's in part about the capabilities of the employees, but it's really about the capabilities of the organization and its management. If managers are able to orchestrate the resources that are available to them and others that they can perhaps uh, access through contract or through joint venture, uh, then, 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 then they will be more successful. So it's about building this capability at an organizational level. It can't be just mm. the CEO. If you look at Apple Computer today, uh, certainly it's Steve Jobs that gets all the mm -hmm. attention. But in fact, underneath Steve is an organization that seems to be extremely creative and can implement uh, technologies. And, uh, but more importantly, it can sort of figure out what is the next big thing. I see. Okay, well, I think that's all the time we have for this, David, but uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Linden.